All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Third session for today. Um, in the last couple of sessions, we've definitely focused on uh, product management interviews. Uh, one was product design. How would you improve Instagram stories? And then we focused on an estimation question, which was um, estimate the number of restaurants uh, in a city. Um, now, because the long-term goal is to actually develop uh, not only product management skills, but also technical skills, uh, more from a software engineering perspective, um, because one of my goals is to actually um, build something of my own, um, which could be pretty small, something on the side, but I just want to gain some technical expertise to understand how the overall system works. Um, uh, with product management, I obviously get a uh, good enough overview of uh, uh, the business and product side of things, but um, I obviously do not have uh, a lot of details when it comes to actually implementing it from a technical or a software engineering perspective. So this is basically my attempt uh, to understand more about the nuances on the software engineering side. I have been pretty passionate about it in the past. I do know uh, a decent level of, uh, or a beginner level of um, uh, Python programming, um, SQL, and have also explored HTML and CSS back in my college days. But uh, I honestly, did not touch the finish line. So this would be my attempt to start again, uh, refresh whatever I have learned in the past, uh, quickly uh, ramp up and then eventually try to touch the finish line in the end and uh, gain uh, some level of expertise, not only on the product management side, but also on the software engineering side. Uh, okay, so... I actually found out a resource and uh, it was a pretty interesting resource, uh, free of charge. Uh, and maybe we can begin with that one. I just basically tried to do some Google search and uh, found out that there's a website called as Free Code Camp. There's also this similar uh, YouTube channel. Uh, uh, there's also a similar YouTube channel uh, with the name of Free Code Camp. Uh, which has tons of videos on uh, different sorts of programming. But again, uh, the videos are more theoretical and I do not want to get into honestly the theoretical stuff, but actually get hands-on uh, with the details. So I would like to directly focus on what the Free Code Camp website has. Uh, and when I logged into this website, I saw that there are already some uh, defined courses that I can focus on. Uh, they are to be done in a sequence. So maybe I can just begin with the first one and try to understand what it has. Uh, we'll practice together. Uh, we can also set a timer for uh, uh, 60 minutes. So like I said, two sessions done related to product. And now one session for 60 minutes related to programming. Um, and now, yeah, let's actually begin with uh, responsive web design. So this says that in this responsive web design certification, you will learn the languages that developers use to build web pages. Uh, it could be a hypertext markup language for content and CSS for design. So just to give some clarity, if I open any uh, page, let's say, I open linkedin.com. Uh, in this case, whatever content I see here is mostly coming from HTML and the design, like, you know, basically the uh, the two boxes here and then multiple boxes here, common box here. This is all coming from uh, the design part, which is CSS. So obviously we'll not be do doing something as fancy as LinkedIn just to begin with, but uh, probably something simpler. So um, first, you will build a cat photo app to learn the basics of HTML and CSS. Later, you will learn modern techniques like CSS variables by building a penguin and the best practices for accessibility by building a quiz site. Okay, so there are probably three parts. One is cat photo app, second is penguin, and the third one is a quiz website. 
Finally, um, you will learn how to make web pages that respond to different screen sizes by building a photo gallery with flex box uh, and a magazine article layout with CSS grid. Uh, okay, so there is a mention of uh, something called as responding to different screen sizes. So maybe I can probably show what that is. So now, as you can see, there is a particular screen width here and there are four YouTube videos in one horizontal row. Now, if I increase the width of, uh, if I increase the width of the browser, now you see that there are five. Uh, and now you see that there are six. So the website is responding automatically to uh, the now there are three. Uh, so the website is responding automatically to the browser width, and this is what we want to do. So now, as you can see, now it just has one video. Um, so we want to build a responsive web design, which was essentially the, the title of the, uh, the course itself. So I think that would be the end goal. Okay, so some browser extensions such as ad blockers and dark mode extensions can interfere with the test. If you face issues, we recommend disabling any extensions that modify the content or layout of the pages. Okay, um, just to keep things simple, maybe what I can do is I can turn night mode yeah. off uh, and then start things so that I do not interfere with anything. Okay, so first one is learning HTML by building a cat photo app. Uh, okay, so HTML tags give a web page its structure. Uh, you can use HTML tags to add photos, buttons, and other elements to your web page. Okay, uh, in this course, you will learn the most common HTML tags by building your own cat photo app. All right, um, I can begin. Okay, so here is a preview of what uh, I need to build. Scat photo app, something like a title at the top, some heading here, there's a link. Uh, okay, so normally this link would bring you to another website. It works. This is a link to freecatphotoapp.com, okay. Okay, it also, this image also points to a link. Cat lists, the things that cats love, multiple things, cats love lasagna, top three things that cats hate, cat hate other cats. And then there is a form which has some buttons, radio buttons, and there's also some multiple select check boxes. And there's also like a URL, so maybe I can, enter this URL and click on submit. Normally this form would be submitted, it works. And this form will be submitted too. Okay. So let's start. <clears throat> mm. What does it say? Oh, probably did something wrong. Start coding, okay. Uh, HTML body, step one. HTML elements have opening tags like H1 and closing H1. The text for an element goes between its opening and closing tags. Find the H1 element and change its text to cat photo app. Okay, so I need to change this. Done, and it changed, cool. Check your code and uh, control plus enter okay done code passes submit your code to continue where is submit ah here is submit cool now h1 through h6 heading elements are used to signify the importance of content below them the lower the number the higher the importance okay so H2 elements have less importance than H1 elements. Only use one H1 element per page and place lower importance headings below higher importance headings. Yeah, fair enough. 
Okay, so below the H1 element, add an H2 element with this text. Cool, so H2, this. And I think that should be cool. Then, H1 is already here. The paragraph element is used to create a paragraph of text on websites. Create a P element below your H2 element and give it the following text. Okay. Let's give it the following text. And I believe P is also has a closing tag. It does not mention here, but I'll assume that Okay, so now we have cat photos app H1, this is H2, and this is paragraph. Cool. Uh, commenting allows you to leave messages without affecting the browser display. Okay, comment in HTML starts with this, contains any number of lines of text, and ends with this. For example, the comment remove h1 contains the text this yeah add a comment above the p element with this particular text okay so this exclamation mark two hyphens text and then what was it two hyphens close done no changes in the output. HTML5 has some elements that identify different content areas. These elements make your HTML easier to read and help with search engine optimization and accessibility. Okay. The identify the main section of this page by adding a main opening tag before the HTML and main closing tag after the P element. All righty. So something like this, I would assume. Okay. So this is adding nothing, but it's just structuring particular piece of code into a certain section called main okay in the previous step you put the h1 h2 comment and p elements inside the main this is called nesting nested elements should be placed between should be placed two spaces further to the right of the element they are nested in okay the spacing is called indentation and it is used to make html easier to read H1 element, H2 element, and the comment are indented to spaces more than the main element in the code below. Yep. Okay. One, two. Use a spacebar on the keyboard to add two more spaces so that it is also intended properly. Perfect. You can add images to your website with the image element. They have an opening tag, but not a closing tag. Okay. Tag for an element without a closing tag is called as a self-closing tag. Add an image element below the paragraph. Okay. At this point, no image will show up in the browser. So nothing. HTML attributes are special words used inside the opening tag of an element to control the element's behavior. The source attribute is an image element specifying the image URL. 
here's an example of an image element with a source attribute pointing to the free code camp logo okay so this is a url inside the existing image element add a source attribute sure so this is the src is equal to double quotes and this oh i see the image already pretty cool perfect all image elements should have an alt attribute the alt attributes text is used for screen readers to improve accessibility and is displayed if the image fails to load okay mm -hmm. for example image src cat jpeg alt a cat has an alt attribute with the text a cat inside the image element add an alt attribute okay let's add this text copy and space alt is equal to that it does not show up but it does the job you can link to another page with the anchor element a href link a close okay i i need to link to this a href is equal to this a close i assume this is correct no okay let me check oh yes but where is this closing tag it's weird <clears throat> oh Ah, okay. So a href link, then this closes, and then I add this. This will become orange. Now this gives me the link. Perfect. You can turn any text into other link. Okay. P, I think. Ahref pre code camp is great. Ah, okay. So I think as normal pre code camp becomes a link is great as normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. In your text of your p element, turn the word cat photos into a link. Okay. So a href is equal to something close cat photos close and here something like this yep cat photos also leads me to the same link <clears throat> Now that you have turned the text at photos inside the p element into a link you don't need the second link below the p element this one delete the anchor element below oh i would actually prefer putting a comment just to experiment that's the job
add a target attribute with the value blank to the anchor A opening tag so that the link opens in a new tab. Ah, got it. So href target blank. Hmm. But then one second. Hmm. How can I go back? Previous times you used an anchor element to turn text into a link. Yep. Other types of content can also be turned into a link by wrapping it in anchor tags. Turn an image into a link by surrounding it with necessary tags, href attribute. Hmm. So, Maybe something like this. Hmm, works. Cool. Before adding any new content, you should make us make use of a section element to separate the cat photos content from the future content. Cat photos content from the future content. Take your H2 comment, P and A elements and nest them into a section element. section section close hmm. next time Next up is step number 17. It is time to add a new section. Add a second section element below the, okay. Maybe something like this, yeah. Add a new H2 element and say cat lists, sure. H2, catalyst, H2 close. And then when you add a lower rank heading to the page, it's implied that you are starting a new subsection. After the H2 element of the second, add an H3 element with the text. H3, things set love. After the S3 element with the text, add an unordered list. Nothing, note that nothing will be displayed at this point. Unordered list. Unordered list close. Okay, use the list item elements to create items in a list. So maybe, okay, so milk and cheese would come as bullet points. 
makes sense. L I catnip catnip list close list open laser pointers list close list open lasagna list close yep now i see catnip after the unordered list add a new image with an src attribute and add an alt attribute okay in img src is equal to this and all is equal to slice of lasagna on a plate image does not have a close okay the figure element represents self-contained content and will allow you to associate an image with a caption. An image with a caption, not the image you just added within the figure element. Hmm. Okay, so it's sort of indenting the image. A figure caption element is used to add a caption to describe the image contained. Okay, okay. For example, a cute cat adds the caption, a cute cat, add the image nested in the figure element, add a fig caption. Okay, fake caption, open, close. Fake caption, open. Fake caption, close. Yeah, here it is. Emphasize the word love in the fake caption element by wrapping and an emphasis element so em em close ah italics add the figure element after the figure element add another h3 element with the text top three things cats h h3 H3 close. The code for an ordered list is similar to an unordered list, but list item in an ordered list and numbers are displayed. After the second section elements, last H3 element, add an unordered, add an ordered list. Sure, ordered list. Order list close. List item open, list item close. Copy this two more times. P treatment. Under other cats Ooh. add another figure element sure. figure element was indentation of the image and then image with an src And all 
it is equal to this. And a fake caption. Here probably it would show up. Yep. Cats hate other cats. Now what? The strong element is used to indicate that some text is of strong importance or argument. Hate should be wrapped within strong. Sounds like a bold instead of an italics. Let's check. Yeah, there is a bold now. It's time to add a new section. Add a third section below the second section element. Sure. So. Added. Inside that, add an H2. Cat form, H2 close. Add a form element. Okay. Form element it is a web form to collect information from users. Yeah, nothing yet. There's only this cat form heading. The action attribute indicates whether the form data should be sent. For example, form action is equal to submit the URL tells the browser that the form data should be sent to this URL. Fair enough. And here it should be sent to this. Form action is equal to this. Cool. Oh, but nothing yet. Inside the form. Cool. The input element allows you several ways to collect data from a web form, like image elements. Input elements are self-closing. Okay, so I need to nest an input element now. That's it. And they are self-closing. There are many kinds of inputs you can create using the type attribute. You can easily create a password field, reset button, or a control to let users select a file from their computer. Okay, create a text field to get text input from a user by adding the type attribute with the value text to the input element sure done okay now i see this text attribute pretty cool in order for a form's data to be accessed by the location specified in the action attribute you must give the text field a name attribute okay and assign it to some value. So the name attribute should be this. <laughs> but doesn't oh. oh placeholder. Placeholder is cat photo URL. Yeah, now I see that. The name essentially does nothing. Let me check. 39. In order for a form's data to be accessed by the location, okay. Name is basically the location. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm 
So prevent a user from submitting your form when required information is missing, you need to add the required attribute, okay? Just required, that's it. Cool. So now, Mm -hmm. hmm. Use the button element to create a clickable button. Okay, so this is done. Creates a button. Add a button element with the text submit below the input element. Sure. Button text is what? Submit. Yeah. Mm, please fill in the field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Required. Even though you added your button, they appear next to each other on the page. That's because both input and button elements are inline elements. So the button you added will submit the form by default. However, Relying on the default behavior may cause confusion. Add the type attribute with the value submit to the button. Okay, type is equal to submit. So make it clear that it is a submit button. What exactly would it do? Hmm. You can use radio buttons for questions where you want only one answer out of multiple options. Here is an example of a radio button with the option of cat input type is equal to radio cat. Remember that input elements are self-closing. So here should be below the text, before the text input, add a radio button, okay? Input type is equal to radio. Okay. Label elements are used to associate the text for an input element with the input element itself, especially for assistive technologies like screen readers. For example, label, input, type radio, at label. Makes it so clicking the word cat also selects the, ah, okay, got it. So here, if I click into it, nothing happens. But I click this, it happens. So maybe the ask is to make sure it's something like this. Yep, now I click on indoor and selecting wavy. Mm -hmm. The ID attribute is to is used to identify specific HTML elements 
okay each id attributes value must be unique from all other id values for the entire page mm -hmm. add an id attribute with the value indoor to the radio button create another radio button below the first one label element label input type is equal to radio and id is equal to outdoor outdoor label Done. Oh, now I see indoor outdoor oh select both yeah I know <laughs> select at the same time to make it so, selecting one ray automatically, so both buttons must have a name attribute with the same value. Ah. Cool. Yeah, interesting. You select indoor and submit the form. The form data is based on its name and value attributes. Name and value attributes. Since they do not have a value attribute, the form data will include indoor, outdoor, on, which is not useful when you have multiple buttons. Add a value attribute to both radio buttons. For convenience, send the button's value attribute to the same value as its ID attribute. Field set element is used to group related inputs and labels together in a web form. Field set elements are block level elements, meaning that they appear on new line. Okay. Field set. Copy. The legend element acts as a caption for the content in the field set element pool. Gives users context about what they should enter into that part of the form. Add a legend element with the text this. Is your cat an indoor and outdoor cat? Cool. Next, you're going to add some new form input elements. So add another field set element directly below the current. Done. Add a legend element. Yep, what's your cat's personality? Okay, well now we need to create checkboxes. 
so input type checkbox love it so id should also be loving associate nest then okay label element and add a for attribute with the same value as the input element id associate the by loving So label for loving table close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hmm. Maybe the opposite ah. add the name attribute with the value personality to the checkbox input element Okay, yeah, this will process the web form. Add another checkbox after the one you just added. ID attribute should be lazy. Name attribute should be the same as the last checkbox. So let me just copy it. ID should be lazy. Types is fine. A name attribute should be the same as last. Label should be lazy and text should also be lazy. Now I see loving and lazy. Perfect. Add a final checkbox after the previous one with the ID attribute energetic. Okay, sure. Copy. Energetic. Energetic, energetic. Like radio buttons, form data for selected checkboxes are name and value attribute pairs. While the value attribute is optional, which I have not listed here, it's best to practice to include it with any checkboxes. Okay. Value attribute should be the ID attribute. Value is equal to loving. Okay. Added the value attribute as well. In order to make a checkbox checked or a radio button selected by default, you need to check the attribute. There's no need to set a value to the checked attribute inside this input element. Make sure the first radio button and the first 
Okay. So where's the first radio button? Checked. Checked. Now you will add a footer section to the page. Okay. After the main element, add a footer element. Yeah. Nest a paragraph element and write this. Done. Turn the existing text into a link. Sure. A H R F is equal to this and go live. Ah, it should just be free code camp dot org. Notice that everything I've added to the page so far is inside the body element. All page content element that should be rendered to the page should go inside, yes. However, other important information goes inside the head element. So let's add the head element. Okay, title determines what should be shown. Can photo app. Notice that the entire contents of the page are nested in the HTML element. Yes, all other elements must be descendants. Yes, add the language attribute with the value English to opening HTML to specify the languages in English. Sure, okay, like this, I would believe. All pages should begin with this. Special string is known as a declaration and shows a browser. Okay. You can set browser behavior by adding self-closing meta elements in the head. Here's an example. Meta element okay Perfect, all done. Okay. Ah. Hmm. What is this? Ah, okay. So the total number of Mm, all complete, colored, yeah, yeah.
Yes, I think it was HTML. Well, all HTML, nothing related to CSS. This was the title. Oh, no, this was H1, H2, paragraph, URL, image, URL, H2, H3, unordered list, image, um, figure, fig caption, emphasis, H3, ordered list, fig caption, Oh, sorry, figure, fig caption, strong. I believe this would be an H2. Um, and this is what? Is it a section? No. Let me see what it is. Form. Cat form, yeah. So section, field set, yeah, field set. So this is a field set, radio, ID, value, attribute, type, there are many things here. Similarly, another field set, uh, checkbox, labels was another thing. Form, close, input, text box, submit button, footer, uh, there were multiple sections. So this is one section, cat form is one section. Another section is cat lists, okay. And then there is another section for cat photos, cat okay, code, three sections, interesting. And this is the body, and there's obviously the title part of things. Head, title, meta, meta car set, yeah. Pretty cool. It's done. Now it's about building a CSS. Learn basic CSS by building a cafe menu. Ah, oh, all right. So I think this is uh for the next uh video. Awesome. <clears throat> oh okay so hopefully this was fun i think it was pretty interesting learning the basics of html i could actually create like a page which is nice i uh, also learned some basics of html so html head body and within head there would be um, some basics such as title uh, meta attributes things like that and within body i think it's everything Heading one, heading one to H6, um, different sections, um, images, anchor tags. Um, what else? Uh, different sections, images, and ordered lists, another unordered lists, list items, and um, field sets, radio buttons, check boxes, text buttons, submit buttons. Um, labels, footers, yeah, I think that was pretty much it. I think it was uh, very helpful, uh, pretty, pretty learning oriented. So, all right, yeah, uh, thank you everyone. Let's catch up uh, in, in the next video. Bye-bye.